thing you got to do is you need to let the spirit move if you if you don't let the spirit move you can just forget about it right. you know so uh, I'm not gonna uh, I'm gonna kind of briefly get into what the Lord had showed me and um, Come on, brother. it's um, I know it's already 12 or after oh, no, that's okay. but I know I know you guys never worry about the time with me I know that but um, let me tell you something really amazing stuff um, I was I was in bed and and the Lord had showed me something. It was early in the morning and um, it was about the um, it was a scripture Revelations two seventeen. Open your get your Bibles and open them up to Revelations chapter two, starting in verse twelve. This really like it wowed me. It it really wowed me. And um, Revelations 2, verse 12. You guys, I remember I started reading Revelation, and um, I actually did this church, the church of Pergamon, and I had broke it down for you guys. Um, I'm just going to read it, and we'll probably get into it a little bit more next week. But um, just so you'll know, Pergamon was the seat of Satan, the Pergamon altar. But um, it's uh, Pergamus is derived from two words, two Greek words, per and gamas. And per means mixed, and gamas means marriage. That's the Greek for marriage. So this uh, deal that he's talking about in uh, the letter to the church, to the angel of the church in Pergamus, Pergamus, he's writing to them about marriages, and I'm going to show you why. Um, they was mixing marriages. They was committing, um, you know, fornication, adultery, and idolatry, idol worship, you know, between, you know, other gods, because it was deceit. But that ain't what I want to get into. I want to show you something. This really took me for a loop. I'm going to read this to you. And, the, uh, and to the angel of the church that's in Pergamos, write these things, saith he which hath a sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thy dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, holding fast to his name. And hast not denied my faith, even as in the days wherein Antipas was the faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan uh, dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou uh, hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Now you guys remember the doctrine of Balaam taught the children of Israel to sleep with other women. That mixed marriages, fornicating, idolatry. So here it is, he's bringing up marriage. So pergamos, it's about mixed marriages, or gamas, it's about marriage. So this whole letter that he's addressing to this church has to do with marriage, okay? Which is amazing. Never saw this before. Um, uh, what I'm about to reveal to you. And taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast uh, thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, and the Nicolaitans taught that you can fornicate and have God too. Greasy grace is basically what that was, but I don't want to get into that. Repent or else I'll come unto thee quickly and I'll fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And this is what grabbed me right here. It says, uh, uh, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Verse 17 is what I want to hit, what I want to get in. 
when I read that, I was like, you know, the hidden manna. You know, and I talk about, you know, uh, the Lord says in Proverbs 25, 2, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. So he's hidden some things away. And then my brother sang the song, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, says the Lord, and I'll show you the hidden things, the things you know not of. And then I'd quote this scripture, that, you know, he that endureth, that he will give unto us the hidden manna. Never in my, never in my days before ever thought thought about the hidden manna. What is the hidden manna? And where in the Bible did they hide manna? In the This is the only place that manna was hidden in the Bible. There was one other place. And Jesus Christ said that he was the true bread that come down from heaven and he was hidden in an earthen vessel. Wow. And I'm like, the hidden manna. All right, Lord, I know the hidden manna. It was hidden in the ark. And then it made me think that, all right, there was other things in the ark. So what was the other things that was in the ark of the covenant? It was, number one, it was called the Ark of the Covenant. So this box, box contains covenants. <laughs> wow. How do we know that? Well, the first covenant that was placed in the box was the law. The law. Amen. Remember that? Yeah. So this was the first covenant that was put in the box, the law. This is actually written in the original Aramaic too. Yeah. And it's written on the back. But, because um, in the Bible it was written on both sides. There was five on this one. No, I'm sorry. There was five on this side and five on this side and five on this side and five on this side. Did you know that? The law was written. Why was it written on two tablets? Because it can't be established by one. It's got to be established by two. <laughs> oh, go back and read it. He wrote it on both sides. You can only establish it by two witnesses. <laughs> I just thought I might throw that one in there. So, the first covenant we see is the covenant of the law. Now, there was three things in it. And... We know that Moses represented the law, and Moses had said something. He said, For God shall raise up a prophet, likening unto myself, him shall ye hear. So, that's a big thing right there. So, Moses was a prophet. So, we know that these three things that's in a box... Not only is it covenants, but it's also going to represent prophet, priest, and king. Right? So we know that Christ came as the prophet, spoke the word of God. He fulfilled this. In fact, we know that he is the ark and we're preserved in him. In fact, the Bible says that he received the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yeah. Just like this ark had three things in it, he was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all in one earthen vessel made of gold because it's pure, because Jesus Christ was without sin. Yeah. Right? That's, this is all an image of Jesus Christ. It's also the mercy seat. It's also a throne. Yes. This is Jesus Christ's throne. And in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. If you remove the mercy seat, well, judgment, like, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, they took the mercy seat off, and all of a sudden the law came out of it and judged them all, they all died. And that's why, you know, uh, Indiana's tied to the pole. Don't look at it, Adrian. What was her name? Don't look at it. Because you can't look at God. You can't see him. If you saw him, in fact, Moses wanted to see him, but he said, no, you can't. You'll die. Where do you think they got that from in a movie? 
See, they know a little something. <laughs> they know if they look at God, they're going to die. So basically, in the ark, there was, there was uh, three covenants. Not only was it three covenants, but it represented the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and that was Jesus Christ. The gold represented the purity. We know it's his throne, but there was something else in it. Was It says that the next thing that was placed in it was Aaron's rod that budded. Aaron's rod, it was a dead stick that came back to life again because it brought forth, it sprouted an almond fruit. Why? This is where, uh, um, when in Numbers chapter 16, when the children of Korah rebelled against God, they wanted to see who the priest was going to be, who would serve. So Aaron and the other 11 tribes put all of their rods in the tent, and God said, the one, you'll see the one in, that I've chosen. And when we went in there, he found Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod that was dead has now become alive again. He's the priest. And the one that was dead and has become alive again and brought forth fruit is he waved the first fruits to the kingdom. He brought him up. He died. He went in the ground. When he arose again, he took that wave offering, those first fruits of the resurrection, you know, and brought him to the Father. So he produced fruit. Amen. The rod, right? That's who he is. In fact, he rules with the rod of iron, the Bible says. Amen. But this wood... This rod represents the priesthood. It represents the new covenant that Jesus Christ is walking in right now. He is fulfilling the, he is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. He, Aaron's very name means bright and splendor. Aaron is a picture of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Jesus fulfilled the prophet role. And that's what you and I are doing right now. We're prophets, meaning to proclaim or to prophesy the word of God. And then he says, don't you know that we are priests and kings in the house of God? Amen. So just as he was prophet, priest, and king, so we are going to follow that role. And I'm going to show you how. So we know that in the ark, these three things, these three pieces, the law is the prophets, first covenant, Aaron dried that budded, brought forth the almond fruit that was dead, and a dead branch now brought forth something that was alive, it became alive again. That's the new covenant that Jesus now is fulfilling as our high priest in the temple of God right now. Yes, so he fulfilled that. What is the gold, golden pot that had manna? What covenant could that be? A golden pot that has manna in it. Wow. Let's look at that. Well, first thing, where we find the understanding of what that golden pot that has manna in it is in the very text that it's written. The very text that it's written is to the Pergamos church, to the church that's married. It's about marriages. Watch. Amazing. This is the marriage covenant. Number one, he fulfilled the role as prophet. He is fulfilling the role as king, as priest, but he's coming as the king of kings and lord of lords to do what? To bring us to the marriage, the kingship. Only kings eat manna out of a gold pot. Anybody got some gold home that you serve your wafer bread on and stuff like that? Isn't it crazy? I mean, just think about this. How do we serve the bread in that? Why is the implements gold? <laughs> it represents his kingship. You see the crown? This is the crown. It's literal. This is what it looks like, the showbread table. 
one rendition. In Solomon's temple, it's got things that slot in, but God says to place a crown on the top. It speaks of the kingship of Jesus Christ. These three of you, you're going to see them manifest over and over. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one earthen vessel, right? Yeah. The outer courts, the inner courts, the Holy of Holies, right? It's always going to be renditioned in three, but yet one. Yes. There's only one throne. Yes. Watch. It is. So the golden pot that has manna, it's, you know, it's, uh, where did they get it from? Well, when they was in the wilderness, this is what God provided for them to eat. Let me go back and read the scripture to you. Because remember, this church, this church right here, this hidden manna, you and I haven't eaten yet. This is the manna that served at the wedding. Amen. Watch this. He says, let me read it again. Um, you know, 12 to 15, he talks about, you know, uh, you know, let me read it again. Watch this. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, marriages, write these things, saith he, which hath a sharp sword with two edges. That sharp sword with two edges is the word made flesh. That's the old covenant bringing death, one side of the sword. That's the new covenant swinging the other way, bringing life. 3,000 died at the giving of the law. 3,000 was saved at the swing of the swipe of the sword on the day of Pentecost. They both happened on the same day. 3,000 died, 3,000 was saved. That's the two-edged sword, right? Then it says, he says, I know thy works and where thy dwellest. Even where Satan's seat is. Wow! The golden pot that had manna was in the seat of God, son. The throne of God. This is the indication of what he's trying to tell you and me. That we read over, that you begin, when you, the more you read, the more the Spirit begins to bring out. Like when he told me, where was the hidden pot of manna? I never thought about that in my life. I built the thing, I put the manna in there, never thought, I've read that scripture a hundred times. Where did you put the manna? Well, hidden pot, where did you put it at? And then all of a sudden he starts opening things up. He opens it up. Listen, it's about, listen, he says, he says, I know where thy, I know where thy works, I know thy works, verse 13, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. This is amazing. He says, and thou holdest fast my name. Wow. You have to hold on to that name with everything that you got. Because let me tell you right now, you are just, um, and, and you are espoused, right? Is that the word? You are espoused right now. You're not married yet. You're just engaged. You have to remain faithful. Amen. A bride that's unfaithful, Joseph was going to put Mary away. But he's talking about this right here. He's talking about his marriage. God was, Balak was teaching him to intermingle with, you know, the children that they're not supposed to be sleeping with. This whole deal right here in Pergamos, Jesus Christ is telling you, listen to me. Either you're going to be married to Satan, but you need to hold fast my name and endure. Because when I return, I'm going to marry you. Watch. He says, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name. They're holding on to the name of Jesus. And hast not denied my faith, even in the, day, in the days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, and where uh, Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against you. Uh, uh, I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, and taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. He's worried about us committing spiritual adultery on him. You can't have the world and him too. You can't. Amen. Because then you, in, or you are in spiritual adultery. You're not holding fast his name. 
Watch. He says uh, that um, he taught uh, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou them that has the doctrine of the, the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. That's, you know, that, that you could do whatever you want stuff. He says, repent or else, watch, I'll come unto thee quickly and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth, using the word. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Watch. To him that overcometh will I give. Will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Wow. So we haven't eaten this manna yet. <laughs> this manna we're going to get to eat, it was just like when David became king. Remember David became king? And who can I show kindness to out of Saul's house? Jonathan's son was still living, Mephibosheth. And he put his feet underneath the king's table and ate from the king's table. We haven't eaten from it yet. Jesus said, I'll no longer drink of this cup. He was having a Passover meal the bread and the wine until I drink it anew with you in my kingdom. Yeah. That's when we're married to him. Hallelujah. But you have to endure yeah. in order to eat the hidden manna. Yes. That's the kingship. Hallelujah. Ah! Hallelujah. Son, give me some of that. Yeah. <laughs> the bread from heaven. Yes. Watch. I ain't done. I'm going to open it up. It is absolutely, I'm going to prove it to you beyond the shadow of a doubt. And what else, if I could just say, that the Bible says we, Jesus, the Lord, Jehovah, Jesus, you know, the Lord, uh, Jesus, I mean, Jesus Christ, the Lord, or Lord Jesus Christ, whatever you want to know, Lord means Jehovah. Jesus represents just the man. Christ represents the anointed one. Lord represents God. That is depicted right there inside of that chest. The Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus came. How do you know him? I'm going to show you something. Many people know Jesus. The man, son of Joseph. Even the Pharisees and Sadducees said, yeah, I know Jesus. Isn't he son of Joseph? That doesn't change your life. Many people proclaim to know him. That's why he said many will say in that day. It needs to be a revelation of Jesus Christ, of who he is. You have to meet him as Christ. The risen Lord, the one that was dead and is alive again. That's what he proclaims. I was dead, but I am alive again. You see, Jesus was clothed in a flesh. Jesus, the man, it represents as he came, when he came as a prophet and proclaimed, you know, the name of the Lord. He is the anointed one, the Christ, that now is the high priest, soon to be king. Look at the next verse. Watch this. It's a marriage. He that hath an ear, verse 17, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone. Wow. And in the stone a new name. Now, how do you receive a new name? We proclaim to be Christians right now. We proclaim to be Christians. But you don't take on his name until you are married to him. He that overcometh will I give of the hidden manna, that is the marriage. And let me just tell you this, do you know what revelation means? The revealing or the unveiling? Of the consummation of all things. Consummation, that's a marriage. Ah! Amen. We ain't tasted the manna yet. That's why he says, go on to the highways and byways. Bid them to come. We can only bid them. 
But he that endures to the end is going to be able to have the hidden manna. And you're going to get a new name. What new name are you going to get? Well, it's written in a white stone. That's kind of crazy because Jesus is the stone that the builders rejected. Yes. He is the chief cornerstone. Yes, he is. I think I remember something about that. Yes. Hold on. And let me uh, turn you, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Go to um, Matthew 16. Matthew 16. I'm going to show you what I'm, I'm talking about. And it's like, wow. Matthew 16 and verse 13, I'm going to start. What I'm saying is the hidden manna, these pieces that was placed in the ark, the law represents the old covenant. Aaron's rod represents the new covenant. But you and me, we're fixing to come into a marriage covenant. And when you come into a marriage covenant, you become one with the king. And then you're seated in his throne. Now you bear his name. He gives you his name. But only those who remain only those who endure. Only those who keep on keeping. Yes. Keeping on. Yes. A lot of people right now profess Jesus Christ. But they're really not His bride. They commit spiritual fornication and idolatry. They run around all over the place proclaiming the name of Jesus. Yeah, I know Jesus. Yeah, He died on the cross. But I'm going to tell you where you changed. Look at this. Verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, He asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say, whom do, that, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Well, let me just tell you this. Judas... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jude and James, his half-brother, they didn't believe he was the son of God. That was his half-brother. They knew him as Joseph's son, Messiah ben Joseph. If you just know him like that, Yeshua ben Joseph, Jesus the son of Joseph, you don't know him. You don't know him. And that's the deal. Everybody knows Yeshua ben Joseph died on the cross. Yeah, everybody knows about that. But have you met him in his resurrected body? Amen. Have you met him in his resurrection? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Peter, before he met... You know, Jesus died. Peter, he died. Uh, Jesus died, and when he died, what did Peter say? Man, <laughs> he's dead. What you doing, Peter? I'm going fishing. He's going back to his life. He's going back to his life. But guess what? When they were fishing, remember, he... Uh, He's on a boat, and he's with John, and there's a man on the shore Amen. cooking some fish. You see, John already knows who he is. John was so intimate with him, he identifies who he is, and doesn't even, not even, you know, his face, seeing his face, he was about 100 yards off the shoreline. John says, hey, that's my, that's... That's the Messiah on the shoreline cooking. Peter's like, what? <laughs> he throws his coat off. He dives overboard. And for the first time in his life, he meets him in his resurrected form. He meets him as Christ. The Son of the living God. Not the Son of Joseph. Watch this. 
When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, He's asking them a question because He wants to know, who do you see me as? He says, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. That's the prophet. Uh, some Elias, Elijah. And others, Jeremiah. Jeremiah means Yahweh establishes. Or one of the prophets. You see, they view him as a prophet. He needs to be viewed as the one who was dead but is alive again. And Peter, God speaks to Peter, and this is what he says. And Simon Peter, watch this. His name is Simon Peter. Simon, his name means hearing. He says... And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. That's the Christos. That is the anointed one. That is the Son of the living God. You're not the son of Joseph. You are the son of the living God. Watch this. He calls him, the son of the living God calls him Christ. That is a big deal to them. He is saying, you are the Messiah. You are the Savior of the world. You are the one that God has sent to die for us. That is what that identification is. Watch what he says. Thou art the Christ. He finally gets a revelation of who he is. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bore Jonah. Simon means hearing. Bore means son. Jonah means spirit. Blessed art thou, hearing, son of the spirit. He just said you heard my God. That's what his name is. Blessed art thou because you was able to hear God. He spoke to you and he told you that I was the one. Flesh and blood hasn't told you this. You see, I can't tell you that. Do you realize this? It takes a divine revelation from God himself to show you who he is. And when he reveals himself to you, you will never be the same. <laughs> never. Amen. That's why I'm so crazy <laughs> for him. That's, all right. That's why I get excited. Because I've saw him. He's revealed himself to me. He is alive. Yes, he, is. he is not dead. He is not on a cross. And these words aren't dead. They are alive. And he's living inside of me. Amen. That's the only thing that people's going to see. They're either going to see a dead Jesus or a live Christ. Amen. Ah! You can keep your dead Jesus. Because guess what? Everybody died. But there's only one man that got up out of the grave, son. Amen. And his name is Yeshua. Yeshua Hamashiach, the son of the living God, not the son of Joseph. Because in Jesus' day, many men were named Jesus. Jesus. Amen. That's right. Even uh, Joseph of Arimathea said it. There were many Jesuses in that day. Which one are you talking about? Oh, I'm talking about the one that God himself sent down from heaven. That's the one that I serve and I follow. I met him. And I'm not the same. And I got a promise from him that I'm holding on to. If I endure to the end, he's going to give me his name. I ain't turning that loose. Never, ever, ever, never. Amen. Ever, never. And Jesus answered, verse 17, and said unto him, Blessed art thou, 
You are blessed if you understand what I'm saying. Simon bore Jonah for flesh and blood hasn't revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And, holy smoke, son, watch this. This is so amazing. As soon as you understand that he is the Christ, you are now taken upon his name. So what does God do? What does Jesus do? He says, <laughs> And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter. Oh, here we go, Bubba. You fixing to get a name change. <laughs> That's what happens when you get married. You know that, right? You know that, right? When you're engaged, you don't take Sharita and take on Robin until they consummated it with that kiss. Mm. And they had to go into the secret chambers. <laughs> And then when they walked out the secret chambers, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, introducing, not the Beatles, the Robins. <laughs> you now sit in his throne. You have his money. You have his account. You have his cars. You have his house. You have everything he owns. Ah! There's no one closer than you to him. None. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Do you realize that? We're already seated in high places if you believe it. All you have to do is endure to the end, and it's yours. <laughs> Amen. We are the heirs of Christ. Hallelujah. Ah! <laughs> Man. Mm. <laughs> He says, and I will say unto thee that thou art Peter. And Peter, it means rock, stone, chip, Cephas. Cephas, this guy now, he took on Jesus' name because he is the chief builder. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the rock that the builders rejected. So Peter, he tells Peter, guess what? Now I'm giving you my name. You a piece of the rock. That's right. And when we go to heaven, we're going to get a name that's in a stone. Wow! Come and let me show you. I'm going to show you the Lamb's bride that has prepared herself, ready for the marriage. And he showed me the new holy city, the new Jerusalem, and the foundations of the stones. Your name is going to be in that house. Yeah. Ah! Yes. My name is there. It's on the mailbox. Go check. Ow, son. I don't have nothing here. My house is coming. I don't want it. I don't want nothing here. <laughs> wow. That's a view of the Christ. That's the one I serve. Amen. That's the one I'm passionately in love with. Amen. You get, you know, you meet your, yourself a new hottie, you want to talk about it, right? I never got over the first love. He is so absolutely amazing. I go into the secret chambers, he shows me things that is unspeakable. <laughs> And all I can do is woo you and draw you, try to get you to go in there with him so he can show you. Mm. <laughs> Why am I crazy? I'm not crazy, I'm in my right mind. Come on, brother. You realize that? I mean... There's enough dead people around here. If you have met Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, I, son, I just, just listen to somebody's testimony. She met him. She's standing right here, right by the thing. She wrapped her very self in the word of God. She just wrapped us. This is God's loving arms wrapped around her. Said, don't worry about nothing. I got you. I'm holding you. That's what holds us. 613 knots that's in this. The old covenant. Well, I'm under a new covenant now. 
This it was hidden here. In fact, just like the pot of manna was hidden in the ark, in the old covenant, the golden pot that was hidden. <laughs> He comes out and says, hey, I'm the golden pot that had manna in the ark. It's me. I'm the bread that came down from heaven. I'm the king. I said, did you heard me? I would have loved to hear him preach. Ah, man, I, I tell you what, I guarantee it. Those guys were freaking out over him. He was telling them things that was blowing their mind. They're trying to rationalize it in their own head. But unless the Spirit of God revealed it unto him, that's why many of them left in John 6, 6, 6. When he said, I, unless you eat this flesh and drink this blood, you'll have no covenant. Holy smokes. So that blood is the blood of the new covenant. But that flesh, that's the promise of the heirs of kingship that we're going to sit on his throne and receive flesh, a new body. You want to know what the golden pot that had manna in it? It's the new covenant, the new body, the kingship of Jesus Christ. He arose. He's the only one that arose in a new tent. Amen. Mm. I'm going to try to finish. I'm about done. Maybe. Let me just say this. So Paul met him. I mean, Peter met him. There's somebody else that met him. Paul knew him. No, Saul knew him. Saul knew Jesus. Saul was persecuting the Christians. He knew all about Jesus. Knew him, son of Joseph. Saw him die on a cross. Held the clothes so when they stoned Stephen, this was right after the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's fervent for, for the Lord God. His life wasn't changed till he met the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen on that. Woo! And what happened? He met Christ? Well, Saul, uh, uh, since you met me now, I've got to give you a new name. <laughs> Saul becomes Paul! Little. Which means little. Wow. That's right. That's what Peter was. A little rock. A little pebble. A little stone. And Paul now becomes a little piece of that. And God says, and I'm going to build my kingdom on your proclamation that thou art the Christ. The risen one. That's where the foundation is. When he arose from the dead, there it is right there. I'm going to build on that that was dead and is alive again. Don't build on something that's dead. Too many people out there are proclaiming a man that died on the cross and hasn't met him in his resurrected form. Amen. Many. I'm going to show you that exactly what I'm telling you, it's, he, he goes right into it. Watch. Matthew 16. Keep reading. He says, Matthew 16. He says, um, he said, verse 18, And I say unto, and as I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Let me tell you something. If you have met Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Amen. If you only know Jesus and haven't met him in his resurrected body, where your life has changed and God has revealed it unto you that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, well, all you, all you know is a man, Jesus, that died on a cross. That's all you know. But when you get a glimpse of who he is and only the spirit of God can reveal that to you, now you have something. So he's the Lord. He is Jesus Christ. Jesus the prophet. Christ the high priest after the order of Melchizedek who has been resurrected. The Lord. Lord is God. Yahweh. King of kings. Lord of lords. One throne. It's how you know him. Wow. 
great pastor. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked. So I'm just going to stop right here, and I'm going to flip to Revelations chapter 4. Go to Revelations 4. Revelations chapter 4. There is one God, one Lord, one Spirit, one baptism. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, for we are one. Amen. I'm going to show you who's sitting on the throne. After this, verse 4, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was at, were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you the things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Amen. Watch. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper in a sardon stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. You see the flowers around the throne? Look at behind the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. There was a rainbow behind the throne. Seven, covenant. That's what me and my wife got married underneath right there. Marriage covenant. Wow. Well, let me just back up now to show you who's sitting on the throne. And he, that w and he that sat was to look like upon a jasper. A jasper stone was Reuben's stone. Reuben was the firstborn out of the 12 tribes of Israel. Reuben was the firstborn. And, and a sardine stone. The sardine stone was Benjamin's stone. The last born. So the one that he sees sitting on the throne is the first and the last. But wait, that doesn't prove it yet. Reuben's name means, behold, a son. And Benjamin's name means, the son of the right hand. <laughs> uh, that's who's sitting on the throne. It's all in how you know him. All in how he reveals himself to you. He is Abba Father. Yes, he is. He is the Lamb. He is Jesus. He's the Wonderful Counselor. He is the Christ. Yes. He is the Spirit of God. Yes. He is everything and all things. Yes. And we're going to see that one day. Hallelujah. Now back to Matthew 16. He says, He says, And I will give unto thee, verse 19, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Oh, no, you just did not do that. Because... You don't give the bride the keys until you guys are married. Yeah. Change the name. You get the name. Your name's on the mailbox now, huh, Miss Gloria. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, there's a name right there. And what happens? Then the husband gives the wife the key. That's what it's talking about. The keys of the kingdom. What did you say? The keys of the kingdom? I have a key that lets me in up there. And his name is Jesus Christ, the Lord. Or the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, I got a street, my name's on somewhere up there. Here, I got the key. And when I get up there, he's going to take me to my house. <laughs> Watch this. It gets better. It gets better. It does. Because when you understand the context of what he, he's speaking and what he's talking about, if I teach you about heavenly things, I teach you about earthly things and you don't understand what I'm saying, how am I going to teach you about spiritual things? That's what it's, he's likening it to a big spiritual, earthly spiritual context. That's why before you can have a marriage here, you have to have it here. Because if you don't have it here, you'll never have it here. Period. 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 You'll never have a true marriage here right. until you have it here. Because then you'll appreciate and know what you have Amen. and what this whole marriage thing is between her and I. 
She's a bride. I'm a bride. She brings forth children. I bring forth spiritual children. She's practicing. I'm practicing. For what? We're both waiting for the king to come get us. We're both brides. It's, it's like, wow. I, mean, I said I was going to go to 30 minutes. It says, um, he said, watch this. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on the earth, it will be loosed in heaven. So whatever we need is there, just for the calling. Yeah. Then charge his disciples that they should tell no man he was Jesus the Christ. That's what he says. That makes a big difference. Christ means Messiah. Don't tell nobody. Because it ain't time yet. Why? He hasn't resurrected from the dead. But I've just revealed something to you. A secret. And then... What does he do? What's the Christ have to do with? The death, burial, resurrection, right? Look what he does. Next, what he goes into, watch. He says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. <laughs> ah, see, that's what he's talking about. Amen. Then Peter, you see Peter, haven't, he, God tells him he's the Christ, but he hasn't experienced the risen Lord yet. Amen. So he's not walking in that power. It hasn't come yet. He didn't give it till after Pentecost. A spirit told him that he was the Christ, but the spirit is not living in him yet. Right. So he can walk that manifestation out. So what does he do? After revealing he's the, the son of the living God, Christ, then he says, <laughs> craziness. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, um, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be done unto thee. But he returned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things of God, but thou savorest the things of men. See, Amen. he professed who he was. But the Spirit of God wasn't living in him yet. And it wasn't until he met him in his resurrected body. Because he knew him as, he still was battling that he was Jesus, the son of Joseph. And yeah, he does miracles. But miracles and signs and wonders will never hold you. Amen. It's got to be an intimate, personal relationship Amen. with Jesus the Christ. Amen. You understand Amen. the words that I'm speaking now when I say Jesus the Christ. Amen. That's the one I serve. Amen. Period. Amen. <laughs> Exclamation point with spit on it. Period. <laughs> I'm about done. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his execution stake, his cross. So now he's letting us know how and what we must do to be a part of his kingdom. <laughs> let him deny himself and let him take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, we'll find it. Watch this. Because now the illusion comes to the return of the Lord when we're going to receive what He promised us. He says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? Wow, He's talking about the earth now. Come on. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He's fixing to go spiritual on him. This, this guy is awesome. He is bad to the bone, son. You hear me? Jesus, the Christ, is, an, is awesome. <laughs> I mean, he wrote the book. He says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Amen. Or what shall a man giveth in exchange for his soul? You see, the soul is it. That's what lives forever. And then he says, Watch what he does now. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. Oh. He's coming as King of Kings and Lord. That means Yahweh. That means Father. Uh-oh. So if he's coming like that now, 
Well, I remember the father in the Old Covenant. He didn't play around. He didn't play around in the Old Covenant. But watch. So now he's giving you the prophecy of the second coming of the Lord. This is when we get to eat the bread. This is about the marriage. 27 and 28 is about the marriage. Watch. For the Son of Man shall come in the clouds of his Father, in, in the glory of his Father with his angels, and he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto thee, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in clouds of great glory. And in the next verse says, After six days taketh Peter, James, and John up into a high mountain, and he was transfigured. They saw him in his resurrected form. The glory of the Lord was upon him. They saw it, the three that was closest. Why after six days he taketh Peter, James, and John? Because after 6,000 years, he's coming back. And I didn't even get into the half of it. But Father, you're so good. I pray that everybody in here, Father, would receive a revelation from your Holy Spirit that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God that came down from heaven, clothed himself in a tabernacle, possessed the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He was the prophet, Father, that you sent. He is now the priest, the high priest, no other priest, after the order of Melchizedek, soon to be the reigning King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Lord wanted me to tell you this. It says that when the Queen of Sheba heard all about Solomon, heard all about his wisdom, heard all about his gold, heard about everything he's had in his kingdom, that's us. It says that when she had walked into his presence, she was absolutely astounded. No more spirit left in her. There was no more spirit left in her. Amen. And she said, it wasn't even told of the half of what it was. That's what it's going to be like when we walk into the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Let it be. Amen. Let it be. And amen. Let it be. Amen.